What I have here is a Harry Thomas special report for June 19, 2009. The website is located at harrythomas.info. I'm your host, Harry Thomas. 29 engineers say only explosives can explain 9-11 World Trade Center destruction. This come out of 911blogger.com Friday, June 19, 2009. 29 structural and civil engineers cite evidence for controlled explosive demolition and collapses of all three World Trade Center high-rises on 9-11. More than 700 architects and engineers have joined call for a new investigation faulting official collapse reports. The facts are in. The evidence is conclusive. These experts lay it all out. And this is a PDF report that came out of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. In 2006, San Francisco Bay Area architect Richard Gage began raising technical questions among his professional colleagues about the destruction of the Twin Towers and 47-story World Trade Center Building 7. Those who take time to look at the facts overwhelmingly agree that vital questions remain unanswered, Gage has found. Today, more than 30 structural engineers, experts in what can and cannot bring down buildings, have joined almost 700 other architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth in signing the petition demanding a new investigation. Artificial Symmetry The symmetry of collapse struck Paul Mason, a structural engineer in Melbourne, Australia, and Dennis Kohler, a professionally licensed engineer in Wisconsin. Kohler was troubled by the collapses, totally and uniformly, and the fact that the mass of debris remained centered on the building core all the way down. The towers should have fallen with increasingly eccentricity as the collapse progressed, writes Howard Pasternak, a physical engineer. These systematic collapses required that many structural connections not only fail nearly simultaneously, but also in sequential order, wrote Frank Cullinan, another physical engineer who designs bridges in Northern California. That's impossible from an asymmetrical impact loading and small short duration fires. The engineers find it difficult to believe that the government's claim scattered fires brought down about such an orderly collapse. Failure of heat weakened steel would show large deflection, asymmetric and local failure and slow progress. David Scott told colleagues at the Institution of Structural Engineers in the UK. It's a gradual process, agrees Anders Borkman, and cannot be simultaneous everywhere. A Swedish naval architect working in France, Borkman maintains that failures will always be local and topple the mass above in the direction of the local collapse. William Rice, a Vermont structural engineer, expects fire-induced failures to be tilting, erratic, and twisting, while Ronald Brookman, a licensed structural engineer from Nevada, California, figures on a partial collapse t to the side. Symmetrical collapse requires simultaneous failure of all supporting columns, notes Charles Pengelo. How could all 47 core columns fail at the same instant? Pegalo has performed design work on offshore oil rigs and tall buildings. His opinion? Fires could not do that. Impossible Collapse Acceleration The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, characterized the Twin Towers collapse as essential in free fall. Brookman wrote asking NIST investigators why debris fell with little or no resistance from the intact structure below. Rice questions how each tower inexplicably collapsed upon itself, crushing all 287 massive columns on each floor, while maintaining near freefall speed, as if the 80,000 tons of supporting structural steel framework underneath didn't exist. Falling objects should take the path of least resistance, notes Pasternak, while official explanations claim that tower debris took the path of greatest resistance through the strong cross-brace core structure all the way down. The Twin Towers were overbuilt to prevent office workers from getting seasick on windy days, says Collar. There's so much redundancy 
the building has to be stiff enough so it doesn't sway. Perimeter columns designed to endure hurricanes, Scott says, were loaded only to about 10% of their ultimate capacity. In the gentle breeze on 9-11, gravity was a negligible part of the loading, says Collar, citing a claim by the tower's engineers Worthington, Skilling, Hell, and Jackson that even with all the columns on one side cut, and several around the two corners, the tower would still withstand 100 mile per hour winds. The rapid breakup of this robust structure appears to defy the laws of physics, engineers say. 45 years of structural design experience informed the view of Claude Briscoe that the government's collapse theory seemed to defy the laws of mechanics, conservation of energy, and known structural failure behavior. In the official story, the kinetic energy of the falling debris would have been largely absorbed by the energy required to dismember the structure, bending and twisting steel components and pulverizing 220 acres of concrete floors. To accomplish all this while achieving a nearly free fall speed collapse is simply not physically possible, says Mason. There is not sufficient energy available for this massively strong structure to have just crumbled away at nearly free fall speed would have required immense amounts of explosive energy. Weak fires versus explosive events. Though four official accounts blame fire for the destruction of all three World Trade Center towers, the fires do not appear to have been particularly severe. NIST states that the jet fuel burned off in just 10 minutes. They also acknowledge that office furniture burns for only 15 to 20 minutes in any one area before it's consumed, Scott points out. There's ample evidence that the steel temperatures got nowhere close to the 600 plus degrees centigrade or, 1, or 1200 degrees Fahrenheit required to cause failure. We saw no raging of infernals on TV, David Hubner points out. Sooty smoke and dull red flame, Scott says, indicate cool fires, fuel starved fires. Firemen at the 78th floor impact zone reported only two small fires, Scott adds. Not the thousand degree centigrade infernal government officials claim. New York Fire Department personnel trained to access fire structural hazards had no reason to expect total collapse, Brookman writes. Scott notes that several steel frame towers have burned longer, hotter, and much more intensely without collapse. As engineers, we know what fire can do to steel and what it can't. Over 100 recorded witnesses reported hearing and seeing multiple explosions, Rice wrote. Brookman cites numerous eyewitness accounts including the Fire Department of New York's oral histories of secondary explosions well below the impact floors. His letter to congressional representatives describes explosive clouds of dust and debris moving horizontally and vertically, Brookman added. That does not look anything like a heat-induced gravitational collapse mechanism. Rice notes that perimeter columns weighing several tons each were ejected laterally up to 600 feet. His conclusion, not possible without explosives. Angular momentum arrested. As the south tower began to fall, the top 25 stories tipped as a unit photo show. The tilting block doesn't look right, Brookman said. It should continue to rotate and fall to the ground, Edward Nessel and Lamba say the same thing. The failure mode of such tall structures should have been a fall over to the side and a toppling of the upper floors to one side, not a concentric vertical collapse. It looked like an explosive event, Brookman said. The upper section began tilting toward the damage zone and then suddenly dropped straight down and disintegrated in the process. Building 7's mystifying implosion. Baffling as the tower's collapses were, even more perplexing was the destruction of World Trade Center Building 7. Unprecedented, says Rice. Unexplainable, says Hubner. No plane hit the building points out Graham Inman, a chartered engineer in London. Few Americans have given any thought 
to the third World Trade Center high-rise destroyed on September 11th, since it was not repeatedly televised. Kamal Obaid ponders it. A localized failure in a steel frame building like World Trade Center 7 cannot cause a catastrophic collapse like a house of cards without a simultaneously and pattern loss of several of its columns at key locations within the building. Videos show simultaneous failure of all columns, wrote Inman, rather than the expected phased approach in which undamaged columns would show resistance sequentially. Though the building housed offices of CIA, the Secret Service, and the Department of Defense, among others, Rice notes, the 9-11 Commission left World Trade Center 7's collapse out of its report.